Hello and welcome back. This is our video solution to problem two from Super Quiz One. Uh, in this problem, uh, we're still looking at set theory, only this time we're going to play around a little bit, uh, maybe come up with a, a counterexample to statement, to a statement, and also prove a statement. So we're given two sets A and B, and we're defining. Uh, so this is the Greek letter delta, uh, and this is often used for what's called the symmetric difference. So A delta B is defined as all the elements of A that aren't in B, union with all the elements of B that aren't in A. So how about we draw a picture? We'll use a Venn diagram. So here's our A and our B, and all the things that are in A but not in B, that's this stuff, right? So it's the stuff that's in A but not in the intersection. And the things that are in B but not in A, well, that'll be all this stuff. And we're unioning them together. So this is basically giving us everything except for the intersection. All right. In fact, we, we could probably write this in another way, right? This is the union of A and B, but you get rid of the intersection of A and B. Okay, fine. Uh, I say let U be a set and let P, Q, and R be subsets of U. Fine. One of the following two statements is always true. Determine which one and then prove it. Uh, well, they look very similar. Uh, they both have the symmetric difference of Q and R. The only difference is here we have a union with P and here we have an intersection with P. And on the other side, yeah, it looks like, again, you're doing a, a symmetric difference, uh, but so union turns into union and union, and down here, intersection is intersection and intersection. This kind of looks like a distributive law, all right? So if you think about A times B plus C, this is A times B plus A times C. Right? So this looks a lot like that. So you have P intersect Q symmetric difference R, is the same as P intersect Q, symmetric difference, P intersect R, right? Kind of works like times and plus. Uh, but, I mean, we shouldn't assume that that actually is true because, in fact, what does this say? It says one out of the following statements is always true, uh, which doesn't explicitly mean one is false, but it does kind of suggest that might be the case. Uh, so let's give, uh, I don't know, let's look at A, right? So um, if we uh, want to show that this is uh, true, well, you know, maybe we should like do an example, right, to see if this actually makes sense. Um, so if I, if I, let's draw a picture, right? That's just kind of a good start. So there's going to be my Q and my R. And um, how about... Well, I mean, we could just draw a P that doesn't intersect them at all. Let's see if that works. So let's see what happens. If I do the symmetric difference of Q and R, then I get all this junk. And if I union it with P, well, I'm just going to get all the stuff that's in P as well. So I get the shaded region, right? So the shaded would be P union Q symmetric difference with R. OK. Now, what if I did it the other way, right? What if I did P union Q first? So I have my P, my Q, my R, P, Q, R, and I do P union Q. So that's going to give me everything that's in P or Q, right? Which includes this intersection now. Um, now I want to do the symmetric difference with P, inter P union R. So let's, let's get P union R also. Uh, so we'll get a different color going. So I still have P, and then I'm also going to get R. Okay, now when I do the symmetric difference of the green and the purple, so the symmetric difference says I find all the things that are in P union Q, so that's the green shaded area, that are not in P union R. Okay, so that's the purple. So where's all the things that are in green but not in purple? And I guess that's going to be uh, this stuff, which is over in Q, but which is not in R. Okay, 
then I need to take the union with all the things that are in P union R, but not in P union Q. So all the stuff that's in the purple, but which is not in the green. Okay, so the stuff that was in the purple, but not in the green, okay, that's, that's going to be um, this junk over here, right? So all this purple, that's all in green. This purple's in green, but I'm just going to get this stuff over here. Okay, so the blue shaded and the yellow shaded, right, put together, that makes P union Q symmetric difference P union R. So we're getting that our P union Q symmetric difference P union R is going to be the union of the blue and the yellow. And that's not the same thing as I had up above. All right? Remember up here we had all the stuff in P, all the stuff in Q, and all this stuff in R. Well, the green bits in the Q and the R, that matches up, but now we have all this extra P. So this doesn't seem very likely, right, to, to hold. Um, we could write down uh, an explicit example if we weren't trusting our pictures. So um, what if we did something like uh, P equals ABC? Okay, so, and, and I'm going to take a Q and an R that uh, maybe have some intersection. So Q... That could be uh, D, E, F. And how about R can be, um, how about E, F, G? Okay, so what happens when I do P union Q symmetric difference with R? So the P we already know is A, B, C. And it's a union, so we're going to get all of those. And then Q symmetric difference R, remember what that says, it's everything that's not in the intersection. So let's see, E and F are in the intersection, so it's just going to be D and G. Okay, let's check the other direction. So if we do P, or the other side of the equality. So if I P union Q symmetric difference, P union R. Well, let's see, P union Q, that's A, B, C, D, E, F. All right, so we have A, B, C, D, E, F. And P union R, that's going to be uh, A, B, C, E, F, G. And the symmetric difference is going to be all the things that are not in the intersection. Well, what's in the intersection? A, B, C, oh, A, B, C, uh, E and F, E and F. Okay, so D was not in the intersection and G is not in the intersection. So D and G are the only elements in that symmetric difference. And these two sets are not the same thing. Okay, so what a big shock. We don't actually end up uh, getting the same stuff. All right, so A is definitely not the correct formula. So the union and the symmetric difference do not satisfy distributivity. So it better be true <laughs> that the intersection and the symmetric difference do satisfy distributivity. Well, how are we going to prove that? All right, well, let's, let's write the statement again. So P intersect the symmetric difference of Q with R is supposed to equal P intersect Q symmetric difference with P intersect R. Now, at the end of the day, as complicated as this looks, the left-hand side is a set. The right-hand side is a set. And we want to show that two sets are equal. That means we need to show that they have the same elements. So we can simply show that every element of the set on the left is an element of the set on the right, and every element of the set on the right is an element of the set on the left. Okay. Well, let's see what it means, right? Let's start with this. What does it mean that X would be an element of P intersect with the symmetric difference of Q and R? Well, it's in an intersection of P and some other set. Intersection means it's in both, okay? So this is equivalent to saying that X is an element of P and 
x is an element of the symmetric difference of q and r. Okay, well, there's nothing really interesting here to say about it being an element of p, but we can break down what it means to be an element of the symmetric difference of q and r. So this is equivalent to saying x is in p, and, okay, well, what did q symmetric difference r mean, right? This was q not r union r not q. Okay, so if you're in a union, that means you're in one of them or in the other one. Okay, could be both, but you're in one or the other. So what if it was in the first one? Well, if it's in the first one, that would say x is an element of q, and x is not an element of r. Okay, or, or it's in r, not q, which would mean x is an element of r, and x is not an element of q. Okay, and we'll use some brackets here, right? So it's in P, and it's at least one of those two things is true. Now, of course, if we look at these carefully, we can see they can't both be true, right? If you're in Q and you're not in R, then you can't be in R. So it's exactly one of these is going to be true, okay? So we, we just know, right, exactly one is true. Right, so either x is in q and not an r, or, and that's an exclusive or now, x is an r and it's not in q. Okay, well, we don't feel like we have so much more to say, maybe, so let's go down to the bottom and look at this other side. So, what would it mean for x to be an element of p intersect q, symmetric difference with p intersect r? Well, if you're in the symmetric difference, so this is equivalent to saying, whoops, I'll put this equivalence down here. This is equivalent to saying that X is in the first set, not this set. So this is P intersect Q, but not P intersect R. Union, P intersect R, not P intersect Q. Okay, and we'll get some brackets in here to help separate everything. Okay, so being in the symmetric difference means you are in a union of two sets, right? And they, they're just written down, right, uh, sort of symmetrically. Hey, symmetric difference. Okay, well, what does it mean that you're in this union? Well, it means you're in the first set or you're in the second set. So this is equivalent to saying X is in P intersect Q, not in P intersect R, or X is in P intersect R and not P intersect Q. Okay, we're making some headway. So what does it mean that we're in P intersect Q, but not in P intersect R? Well, if you're in P intersect Q, that means you're in P and you're in Q. So this would be X is in P and X is in Q. But now we also have this is not in P intersect R. Ah, so what does that mean? Well, if you're not in P intersect R, that means you're not in both P and R. Okay, but we already know X is in P, right? In this, in this version, if X is in P, and it's not in both P and R, then it means it's not in R. So this means that X is in P and X is in Q and X is not an element of R. Okay, so that's that's if it's in this first part of the OR. Well, what if it's in the second part of the OR? If it's in the second part of the OR, then, well, X is an element of P and R, so it's in P and it's in R but it's not in P intersect Q, which means it's not in both P and Q, but we already know that it's in P, right? In fact, in both of these, we see it's in P. So it's not in Q. So X is not an element of Q. 
Okay, so this tells us X is in P, and then X is in Q and not in R, or X is in P, and X is in R and not in Q. But this, the fact that X is in P shows up in both places tells you no matter which of those two cases, X is in P. So this is equivalent to the line above. X is in P, and look at this, X is in Q and X is not in R, or X is in R and not in Q. So we've just shown, right, a whole line of equivalences, which shows you that if you have an element in the intersection of P with the symmetric difference of Q and R, then it will also be an element of the symmetric difference of P intersect Q and P intersect R, right? And it's if and only if the whole way. So every element of one is an element of the other. And so we conclude that P intersect the symmetric difference of Q and R really does in fact equal the symmetric difference of P intersect Q and P intersect R. All right, this is a very handy way of setting up these type of proofs, right? You're trying to show two sets are equal to each other. Uh, you, you're not always going to be able to have equivalences up and down, but it's a good thing to try. That way you can do the whole proof sort of in one attempt, right? And it's very useful, particularly when you're dealing with sets and you're defining them in terms of other operations, like here an intersection and a symmetric difference. It's very handy to just write down the definitions of everything. And you break it down as far as you can until it, it's basically at the primary, right? The atomic steps, X is in P. That's something very atomic, right? There's no, no way to expand that any further. And when you do, very often you're going to find that they just connect up, right? So no miracle here, right? Just definitions.